This is a really interesting article. Lightning may actually protect living organisms. An unusual study has found that lightning's electromagnetic fields have positive effects on living beings. This is from February of last year, and I just so happened to miss this article. I didn't see it till later after the fact that I made this video, Electromagnetic Fields, Schumann Resonance, and Terraforming. I would have included this article in this video if I had known about it at the time that I made it. But additionally, I just wanted to point out this video because what I'm going to go over here will make a lot more sense if you've listened to this first. In what may be the most surprising news this week, lightning, often feared, has been found to have protective effects over living organisms. More specifically, it is its electromagnetic fields that work their magic on living beings. And the report that this article is referring to is from Tel Aviv University. Lightning's electromagnetic fields may have protective properties. Lightning was the main electromagnetic presence in the Earth's atmosphere long before the invention of electricity. There are some 2,000 thunderstorms active at any given time, so humans and other organisms have been bathed in extremely low frequency electromagnetic fields for billions of years. Allegedly. <laughs> These electromagnetic fields, the result of global lightning activity known as Schumann resonances, are weak and difficult to detect. Scientists never suspected that they had any tangible impact on life on Earth. And that, of course, is referring to the conventional wisdom as it relates to low-frequency electromagnetic fields and the effect that they have on life. The original Schumann experiments that predicted the existence of the low frequency standing waves that would exist as a result of the interrelationship between the ionosphere and the surface of the earth were done in the 1950s and 1960s. So this information has been out there for a long time. And of course they have most likely <clears throat> taken advantage of and used this information in the meantime. But anyway, a new Tel Aviv University study finds that these fields may have protective properties for organisms living under stress conditions. We found that under controlled conditions, the Schumann resonance field certainly had an effect on living tissues. The most important effect was that the atmospheric ELF fields actually protected cells under stress conditions. In other words, when biological cells are under stress due to lack of oxygen, for example, the atmospheric fields from lightning appear to protect them from damage. This may be related to the evolutionary role these fields have played on living organisms. In the course of numerous laboratory experiments in which the scientists induce fields similar to those in the atmosphere, they witnessed significant effects on living heart cells of rats within 30 to 40 minutes. Extremely weak magnetic fields in the 7.6 to 8 hertz frequency range induced a number of effects when applied to rat cardiac cells, including reductions in spontaneous contractions calcium transients and the release of creatine kinase. The release of CK into the liquid medium around the cardiac cells is a measure of damage to cardiac cells, which also occur during heart attacks. The scientists found that the effects were temporary as the induced cell changes reversed when the fields were turned off. It is the first study that demonstrates a link between global lightning activity 
the Schumann resonances and the activity of living cells. It may explain why all living organisms have electrical activity in the same ELF spectral range, and it is the first time such a connection has been shown. This may have some therapeutic implications down the line, since these ELF fields appear to protect cells from damage, but this requires further research. Obviously, there is a long history of researchers who have discovered the effect that certain frequencies have on the body and the ability that those frequencies have to benefit a body that is in a state of disease. But like most of these things, this information has been suppressed and altogether dismissed because frequency generation is a relatively low cost activity that would not have any long-term financial benefit. <laughs> so not a surprise that that information is not taught in the textbooks in public schools. But this is so interesting because the frequency that they used in this study was 7.6 to 8 hertz, which is right on the border of theta and alpha brain waves. 8 hertz is kind of that borderline between theta and alpha. And that's very important because this 7.83 hertz right in the middle here is the frequency that one of the Schumann resonances oscillates on. And from there, it is theorized that this is the residence that the body is most affected by. And this study is proving that, saying, look, we made our own artificial frequency that replicates the 7.83 hertz. We applied it to living cells, and the result that we witnessed is that this frequency is actually protecting these cells from damage that are under stress. And so this is what I was getting into in this video here about how all of the electromagnetic fields that we are now subject to is almost like a form of terraforming. It's disconnecting the body from the natural frequencies between the surface of the Earth and the ionosphere, which now a scientific study is showing has a protective benefit on our very cells and their ability to function properly. But more specifically, on a shorter time scale, it's... a subtle influence on the human body that is taking place via the exposure to an increasing amount of electromagnetic energy and waves that are not a part of the Earth's natural resonance cycle. And there's a lot of hysteria out there surrounding 5G which is the latest iteration of this wireless communication system. But it's really more of a subtle thing that's taking place where, especially if you live in one of these big cities, being constantly subjected to this artificial resonance, like the article was pointing out, might impair your body's ability to be connected to the Schumann resonances, which this is showing actually has a protective effect on the cells that they studied. It appeared to protect them from damage when they were under stress. So that's the real danger of this wireless technology and everything that goes along with it. It's that it's removing 
the natural state of affairs where the body is protected from stress and damage. And of course, when those conditions are present, that's when disease manifests itself. And that's why you can find stories of cancer clusters and other disease clusters that are right next to a cell phone tower, for example, or something similar to that. A lot of the times, people don't even know that that's what's causing their problems, that they're directly under one of these wireless communication towers. And based on what this article is saying here that's reporting on this study, you know, it makes a lot of intuitive sense why this would be the case. Well, if you're constantly being blocked from connecting to the ionospheric cavities resonance, well, it's no wonder that various problems begin to develop. I mean, to say nothing of smaller problems like the difficulty sleeping or, you know, like I said here, this has only been going on for 200 years. This is a very recent phenomenon that is taking place. We really have no idea what the long-term effects of this are going to be on the human body. And that's a point made very clear here relating to just how long the body developed in tandem with the Earth's electromagnetic fields without this influence. And now this influence is put into the mix and the connection isn't as secure as it used to be. And so there's all kinds of problems that are resulting from the body not having the protection that it used to have. So I just wanted to go over this article real quick and point out this study as it related to this because I missed it when I made this video. So that's all I got for now.